Constitutional reform seems a distant goal at this time and made even more onerous with the brutal killing of one of us Myanmar's known constitutional lawyers, Uko Ni, as he was holding his grandchild. Despite this unexpected and seemingly unsurmountable hurdle, I urge for progress towards constitutional reform through potentially the establishment of a preparative preparatory committee to study possible revision processes. Until the Constitution is reformed to provide for a truly civilian government, Myanmar cannot tr truly attain a full democracy. I also continue to receive reports of serious human rights violations committed by all parties to the conflict, including torture, inhumane and degrading treatment, sexual and gender-based violence, arbitrary killings and abductions, all of which frequently go uninvestigated. Never have I felt more anxiety over potential acts of retaliation and reprisals than in Rakhine State during my visit. I heard allegation after allegation of horrific events like these, slitting of throats, indiscriminate shootings, setting alight houses with people tied up inside, and throwing very young children into the fire, as well as gang rapes and other sexual violence. Even men, young and old, broke down and cried in front of me, telling me about what they went through and their losses. The international community must come together in expressing a strong and single voice in this regard, regardless of varying interests of individual member states. This is why I call for a commission of inquiry to investigate the systematic, structural, and in institutional discrimination in policy, law, and practice, as well long-standing persecution against the Rohingya and other minorities in the Rakhine State.